In a previous tutorial, we showed you some basic techniques on applying symbols to your drawing and how to go in and set the default size in the database. In this tutorial, we're going to go more in depth and show you some advanced techniques that you can use to apply symbols to your drawing. Now, I'm going to be working in the favorites for the most part on this video. I'm going to select the common boxwood and down at the bottom of the symbol library you'll see several symbols down here in the middle you'll see the symbol array tool if I click on that I'm just going to go up to my grid and I'm going to click here and I'm going to move my mouse over and what you'll see here is it's going to apply a row of symbols evenly spaced apart and then when I click it drops those down Okay. Now the even spacing is controlled up here in the edit bar. Now the minimum spacing automatically comes in at the default width of the symbol. If I want the spacing to be farther apart, what we can do is just change the spacing up here and press enter and then we can come in and click. Now you'll see that those are spaced at least six foot three inches apart. Now I do have an option on the edit bar. If we come over and select this icon, we can select no gaps. Okay, if I select no gaps, what this will do is I'll click and you'll notice that when I move my mouse over, the spacing in between the symbols does not change. So if I want something to be exactly six feet three inches apart, we can just move our cursor over till that we get the number we want and each of those symbols will be exactly six feet three inches apart. When I click, that sets those down. Also with the symbol array, we have other line types to use here. If I click on the first icon here, I can select the two points and angle arc tool. And we'll come in and click. And that will place a, an arc of that same symbol evenly spaced apart. Okay, with this tool, we can set the angle. That was set at 90 degrees. And if I put it at 180, that's going to give me a half circle of that same symbol, like so. Also in that same option, we can select the center side circle, and that will give us a complete circle of that same symbol. Also, we have a rectangle. With the rectangle tool, we just drag a rectangle and it floods that rectangle in with a single symbol. All right, we also have an option with the rectangle tool to come up and check stagger rows in the edit bar. And now when I draw that rectangle in, you'll notice that the rows are staggered. All right, let's go ahead and delete these out and move on to the next tool. Now, if we go and select our symbol from the symbol library or our favorites list here, we can select the symbol path array. Okay, if we select the symbol path array, again, we can set the minimum spacing up in the edit bar. We also have various line types that we can set here. We have a line, a polyline, a semicircle, spline, and a fitted line. I'm going to use the spline line here. And I'll click and click click and now it will start to turn all right so if I want to do a path of a single symbol I can do that pretty easily with this tool all right if I right click that sets it down so if I'm trying to follow an edging path or a driveway with a symbol uh, to do maybe a hedgerow or just a row of flowers uh, we can do that very easily with the symbol path array tool all right, now let's go ahead and I'll delete this one out and I'm going to show you another example of what we can do with the symbol uh, array tools. I'm going to go over to our symbol library and I have the deck uh, and fence uh, category selected here. If I select fence 48, this is a 48 inch length of fencing and we're going to select the symbol array tool. Okay, and what we're going to do here is I need to uh, set some options. We're going to use the single line and the minimum spacing. If we set that at four feet and we look at that closely, you'll see that those, those panels are butted up right next to each other. So if I want to uh, space those just like that, we can do that pretty easily. Okay. If we uh, use the same tool, uh, but this time 
I'm going to space it four feet four inches apart. Then we can click and place a row of them just like that. All right, now you'll notice there's a four inch gap there. Okay, now I'm going to go over to the fence post and select that. And I'll also select the symbol array tool. And this time I'm going to put the, uh, the spacing at four feet, four inches apart and press enter. And I'll come down and I'll click right here. And then I'll move over and it will place those fence posts in between the posts there. I may have to realign those just a little bit if my initial point was off. There we go. So it's a quick way to draw in a, uh, a line of fencing. All right, now the next tool is the symbol fill array tool. Let's go ahead and jump back over to the favorites tab and I'll select the boxwood. Okay, with the symbol fill array, what we need to do is we need to define an area uh, and we're going to define that area with a piece of edging. So I'll select my edging tool and I'll draw in a piece of edging like so and I'll right click. Alright, now I've got the symbol selected. I'll go down to the symbol fill array tool. I'll click on the area that I'm going to flood with the symbol. This is a fill cursor so I'll click here okay and it defines that area for me now I need to go up to the upper left corner of the area and I'll click here and then I'll move down to the right and you'll see it starts to paint those symbols on top of that area I'll go here and I'll click again and that sets those down so if I need to cover an area uh, or flood an area with a given symbol, I can do that pretty easily using the symbol fill array. Uh, this would be good if I had uh, an area that I wanted to flood with a certain piece of ground cover. We could do that pretty easily here. Okay, and those are our symbol array tools.